Hello, everyone. It's Eddie Ryder with Designers Lane Podcast, and I have a very special guest, Jenny Blanton. And welcome, welcome. And you are a sponsor, so everyone hears your name. So it's great to have you in the studio. And we went over this before. You are a broker. I am. Um, You're involved in real estate. And um, (laughs) we're going to get into exactly what you do in a couple of minutes. But I want to tell our listeners and remind everyone to subscribe. They're going to see the button and everything and follow with you. Subscribe. Yeah, subscribe. Subscribe, thumbs up. But you told me something really interesting the other day. Mm -hmm. We talk probably daily or every other day (laughs) about how you were involved in a project in the mountains. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, I tell people all the time about you, but more Mm -hmm. central North Carolina, because, again, we want to remind Mm -hmm. we have listeners and followers that are um, throughout the United States. Right. But you handle stuff more than in central North Carolina. Right. So, uh, you know, as a real estate broker, we have the opportunity to kind of do more than just buying and selling in the the Triangle area. Um, We meet and network with relationships around the United States. And luckily for me, I've been blessed where um, I've had a couple of developers from outside of North Carolina show interest in central North Carolina to build luxury neighborhoods. Wonderful. And I'm so so excited about this because this is in central North Carolina. It's up in the mountains. So this particular project is going to be a small boutique kind of neighborhood. We're doing 12 to 15 homes. Love it. Yes. Love it. Yep. I think one of the things that are wonderful, and you've been in North Carolina Mm -hmm. for a while. Um, Right. We've known each other for a few years now. Right. But you're not from North Carolina. I'm not. As I am from North Carolina, from Central, the Raleigh-Durham, actually, Apex area. Right. One thing, I and I, I did go to college in um, L.A. and then the West Coast. Right. And it's very nice to see the difference. And I've been fortunate mm-hmm. and blessed to travel and sure. topography. The rolling hills and things are different everywhere that right. you go. But North North Carolina is fabulous because mm-hmm. on the one side toward our west, toward California, you have the mountains, mm-hmm. which I think go up to, what, 4,500, not quite 5,000 feet-ish. Right. And then in the opposite direction, you have the coast. Right. So I would say that three and a half hours, you can see snow, and then two hours, two and a half hours, you can see the ocean, Mm -hmm. and it's beautiful. And I've Mm -hmm. always felt that North Carolina was beautiful and had that aspect working for it. But now I'm seeing, I actually just heard on the radio when I was, um, right before I talked to you, North Carolina is in the top five where people are moving. Still. Again, again, yes. a report just came out right. that, and they listed the different states that people were moving from and moving to. Mm-hmm. And this was on a national news report. And we get, re- you know, emailed right. reports in all the time, and we're sure. able to see it. We know that North Carolina, especially the Raleigh Durham Central Cary area, is hot. But they mentioned North Carolina as a total. And it was just all I could do from run off the road. I love to hear it. It's wonderful. But North right. Carolina is beautiful. And we have mm-hmm. leaves. They're called deciduous, my big word. The, <laughs> you know, the leaves turn orange and red in the fall right. and they fall off, fall off. We have snow mm-hmm. for about two minutes. And then it's 70 degrees. I think it's a good balance. I think it's a good balance. It's so, a great balance. Yeah. So I want to remind our listeners that over on my left shoulder and your right shoulder, we have mm-hmm. our cheat sheet. Not everyone can see the monitor. <laughs> So we have our note. So right. I'm going to remind everyone. I'm going to kind of look over there and cheat a little bit and make sure we stay on topic, which I have a tendency to get off. Um, number one, which I've already jumped and missed mm-hmm. a little bit, we briefly hit about a sure. couple of things. In a minute or two, very broad, sure. what does a broker do? What do you physically do? So brokers are charged with assisting um, buyers and sellers in the resale of homes or, you know, facilitating new construction or even custom build homes. That's our primary boilerplate. This is what we do. Okay. Um, for me, I do a little bit more. I tend to take advantage that I am a real estate broker and facilitate a lot more than that. So I do land acquisition. I work with builders. I work with developers. Um, I work with my clients that I currently do have and have been referred um, to find them the ideal home or location. And Um, I have taken advantage of that to kind of learn a lot. And I think it's kind of neat. That's what I do. But you can, the real estate market and the actual industry, you can kind of do what you want. You can go, you can stay in residential, you can do commercial, you can kind of, the world is your oyster. And so um, in a nutshell, that's what I do. I have taken full advantage of it over the past few years, especially with the market the way it was. Love it. One thing I didn't hear you say, Mm -hmm. and you may not want to talk about it, and I want to bring it up real quickly. Sure. You're incredible at marketing. Um, yes. You and I 
think that you have a marketing background. I do. Uh, and you, <laughs> I, I, one of the reasons I think you're a fabulous real estate agent mm-hmm. is you bring much more than that to the table, not only land acquisitions and you talk about other stuff, but mm-hmm. I think selling a home today is a lot different than selling a home 10 years ago. And right. it's probably going to change every 12 months now. I think that it's more challenging for real estate agents today than it was 10 years ago because 10 or 15 years ago, you didn't have online details that you could pull up, you know, mm-hmm. through Zillow and Redfin and, you know, all these other things. Right. You can pull it up and see what it is, and which hurts us sometimes because it's not necessarily true. Mm-hmm. And they don't have someone telling them, you know, get the toy out of the front yard, knock the cobwebs <laughs> down before you take pictures. But having a marketing and an advertising background, you mm-hmm. bring something different to the table right. than just real estate. Correct. So um, my background before this is that I did work for a private company, and one of our bigger focuses was advertising and marketing the brand. And I took that experience and actually incorporated it into my real estate business as well. And so marketing is absolutely key, especially with the information highway as it is today. It's at the touch of a finger. And so uh, you as a real estate broker owe yourself and your clients Um, the knowledge and know-how to actually sell or buy property because the information is readily available. It may not be true, but it allows people to arm themselves with information that you have to defend or, you know, kind of correct. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, so marketing is absolutely important in this type of industry. Um, And if you don't have that, you need to find the people that can do it for you. Um, It's just absolutely paramount nowadays. It is. And I Mm -hmm. think that's one of the reasons that you're so wonderful and we communicate about how one thing I've realized is, Mm -hmm. again, I'm a little bit older, so I'm old school. As we older and age in place is we have to move with technology. I have a marketing campaign that we often talk about recently, and I'm able to look at the analytics and all the overview. Mm -hmm. I'm amazed. And, of course, you're probably going to laugh and say, well, duh. How many people get their information off their telephone? Off their telephone. Off yeah. their telephone. Who knew it's we'd be here? about 75 or 80%. Mm-hmm. And then the next thing is tablets. Yes. And guess what? The last thing is their about desktop. 1% right. is their desktop. Right. And I'm thinking, I couldn't live without my desktop. And I think some of it is I have to blow it up so large that I can see it. Right. But it's, it's technology. Mm-hmm. And we do have to remember as designers and as brokers and agents right. and builders that our market is constantly growing and constantly changing. Mm -hmm. I wish it would slow down a little bit because Mm -hmm. every time I turn around, um, we can't do this format anymore because you can't do it or you need to do that or there's something new Mm -hmm. or something, you know, different that has to happen. And that's where someone with um, an advertising and marketing understanding Mm -hmm. plays really important. And you also don't want to spend a ton of money on things that aren't going to work. And also, and I used to help a couple of real estate agents with, with staging and marketing because everyone right. knows I'm brutally honest. And <laughs> I love that about you, by the way. <laughs> and understanding that carb appeal right. and having a house that looks sure. reasonable inside mm-hmm. is a big deal. Right. Um, and also understanding, and we'll get into this in a couple of minutes, if your house is three or four or five hundred thousand dollars, I don't think that you can spend a hundred thousand dollars on fixing it up. Right. Uh, because you're not going to get that money back. Right. And what we're going through kind of in central North Carolina, maybe even more so kind of in the Cary area, we're starting to see it in the Wilmington, North Carolina area, mm-hmm. is homes are being tore down. And oh, then that's there's, huge. There's always this debate is that mm-hmm. if they're going to spend a lot of money X on tearing down the home, right. do you need to spend fifty or or $100,000 on fixing up the kitchen in your master bath? Because everyone thinks they're going to get that money back. And if the house is being torn down, there's always this struggle between the person that's buying it and the person that's selling it mm-hmm. is, are you going to get that back? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I thought about this last night as one of the things I was going to ask you in your opinion. Sure. Do you see value in that? If someone's, you know, right now uh, it's it's public knowledge, we're spending about a million bucks on some of the houses to tear down in central North Carolina, a million dollars. Right. And so if someone puts... Fifty thousand or a hundred thousand dollars, and they think that they're going to add twenty percent on top of that and get it back. Mm-hmm. Are they, you know, or are they not? So it all depends. Well, like, I hate the D word. So. Right, I know, I know, I know, but it's true. So all of it depends because it depends on price consideration of the home, what you're doing with it, um, what the current trends are, has it a big influence. So the the rule of thumb I will tell you is. Um, 
you can't expect to get everything back because at some point when you're remodeling or if you're actually building a home, you have personal preference that someone else may not have. So, and then you may be trendy where everything is gray and white. Mm -hmm. And then when you decide to sell in seven to 10 years, it may be purple and blue. And guess what? You're now outdated. So I think expectation management for anyone who's either doing a remodel or who is purchasing a home or who is building a home is build the home based on what you desire to have, enjoy that home. And then the expectation of when you do sell is understand what that current market is and what the expectations of that current market at that time um, will kind of level the playing field for everyone. But yeah, I think that when you're going to sell a home or if you're going to build a home, it's great to be trendy, but you also want to make sure that it's timeless and that it's elegant or that it's, you know, it's something that's going to last over a long period of time. Because like you said, just like with the real estate market 10 years ago is not what we have today. And so it's the same thing when you go to remodeling a kitchen or buying a home or building a home for that matter. Uh, one of the key takeaways that I heard you say, and I'm mm -hmm. going to start preaching it, is expectation management. Absolutely. Um, I set that often in the design and the building mm -hmm. industry, mm -hmm. and it sounds like it's the exact same thing right. when you're selling a home, and that is a huge deal. Absolutely. I also tell people and encourage people, build what you love and then do what you love. I freak out a little bit in the very <laughs> beginning where, well, I've I don't want to do this countertop because I'm afraid about resale value. I don't want to do this color because mm -hmm. I'm afraid about resale value. Now, I'm never one to paint the house green with pink polka dots. Um, but if it makes you happy and it's something that you want to do, do and you know that there's a chance it's not going to sell as quickly or mm -hmm. you may have to change it, if you're going to be there for 10 or 15 years, even if you're going to be there for five years, right. do it. Absolutely right. do it because right. it matters. It's your home. You're right. building it. You are spending the money on it. You're spending mm -hmm. the effort and the time. Do what you love. Now, right. we can gauge. Or hire a designer. Hire a designer. Yeah. Even better. We can gauge and give people what we suggest you should sure. and you shouldn't do. But sure. ultimately, it always falls back on the client. Um, it does. To do it. But I, I think the big takeaway that I want people to understand is mm -hmm. that you're not going to get 100% back of not. what you put in. You may mm -hmm. get negative. If you do it wrong, mm -hmm. um, and then you may just break even. Right. And again, we are, I know there's a big debate five or 10 or 20 years behind California. I think our time frame is shrinking a little bit because sure. of the people that are moving from the West Coast and the moving from up north that have a, a fair chunk of change and they mm -hmm. need to spend it. Right. I think that's one of the drivers that's pushing the cost up. But if they don't like it, they're going to gut it and redo it. Absolutely. Or either they're going to tear it down. Right. And I tell people that I, I like volume. Um, mm -hmm. I'm old school. I like mm -hmm. older homes, although I still like modern. But it's hard to take an eight or a nine foot ceiling mm -hmm. and make it 10 or 11 feet. Those are the hard parts, right? So, yes. right, <laughs> right. And sometimes that constitutes a teardown, right. especially in certain price considerations right. and markets. But yeah, um, the challenge will come is what do you do? And the rule of thumb that I say is even if you're not going to get your money back, do something that you're going to enjoy. Because at the end of the day, it's your time, it's your money. Got to see it every day. Every day. Every morning when you wake up. Right. Right when you go to bed, when you come right. home from work, you're going to be able to see and it. And I would tell you this. If you're a hot mess, hire a designer. Yes. You well, know what I mean? Well, if you're a hot mess, don't hire me because I know you need to communicate. That's the big thing. Well, right. and again, it's just it's a designer's job to show you what works and what doesn't work. Correct. And also... A big part of what we do as designers is mm -hmm. showing the general consumer what's out there, what's available. Right. It's not necessarily what is in the local stores. Mm -hmm. The local stores have a different facet of life. They they're mm -hmm. used to they want to push stuff and turn stuff out there. And the interior designer is, I mean, I go to Dallas, I go to High Point, right. I go to Europe, I look. I'm really involved in structural as well. Mm -hmm. um, so you pull that in. And always a goal is to have a home that 100 years down the road, someone looks at and they don't want to tear it down. Right. You know, they want to they want to refurbish it. They want to remodel it. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where it gets in. You know, you know, 55 years ago where we had eight and nine foot ceilings, we thought those were great. No one had eight foot doors. Now it's we're at 11 foot ceilings and we're about to go to 12 and 13 feet. Mm -hmm. And is that going to be the new industry standard? Who doesn't know? Always look at houses in Europe are three, four or five hundred years old. People love them and remodel them. Take right. your cue a little bit from that. Right, and then exactly. You can still have uh, traditional architecture mm -hmm. and then a modern interior. Right. That can always be changed. I think um, the experience that I've had with you, especially in the custom builds and kind of going through the gamut of clients and the expectations and what their needs and wants are, um, it's kind of interesting. We have a full gamut of 
you know, you have English style all the way to modern, all mm-hmm. the way to just traditional plain Janes yep. out there. And there is nothing wrong with that. It's all personal preference. It is personal preference yeah. and it's what they love. And I mm-hmm. agree. And I think that's nice. And that's yep. what needs to work. So um, let's go to number two before we go into our pictures. And it, it leans in where the remodeling does Oh yeah. Possibly play in and does it, not. And we want people to understand hurt. that. It yeah. can both ways. And right. we can um talk a little bit about that as we look through our pictures. And this is where we also want to remind our listeners that on our YouTube channel, Designers Lane mm-hmm. or Designers Lane Podcast, you're going to be able to see the photographs that we are talking about. And right. what I like to do is kind of go through and tell you what I see. And you can kind of comment what's, you know, working. You see what's selling, what's not selling. Right. And what I love um, about the projects and possibly what people can carry into mm-hmm. uh, that work. So our first one that we have is, um, it, to me, it looks like a remodel because the floors look older and original. They've carried a wood tone on the ceiling. These are full overlay cabinets for those of you who want a little bit of a cabinet education. There's some detail. There's some glass. They've got fabulous hardware. There's also a really nice range over to the right, and I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that when the photo gets cropped in from Drago, but this is lovely. Um, I'm a big fan of the sink in front of the window. It allows natural light. I will say that this leans, it's a little eclectic, um, modern with traditional, that stainless steel apron farm sink. Mm -hmm is definitely a modern take. Mm-hmm. But, and, and they're beautiful and nice, but I, I do have to make uh, listeners aware that if you, you know, heaven forbid, wear a belt buckle or anything that's scratchy on the front of your mm-hmm. um, clothes, you're going to scratch that. Right. Um, is there Same something as- in here that are red flags for you if someone were to put ourselves on the market? Um, the biggest thing is making sure that the colors and the – the finishes, um, those type of things complement each other. Okay. And this can come off as busy okay, um, or too much. And it also could be seen as, you know, um, it's not, the flow isn't there. So if somebody walks into the house and they're immediately turned off by this, right. this just killed the deal. Whereas the kitchen is one of the biggest selling points of a home. Um, especially in this current market, people like the open concept mm-hmm. and the open flow. And some of the tradition is coming back where they like separate rooms. But even still, you know, um, again, personal preference when you go to resale may not be as um, popular as you think. What you like and what, versus what someone else likes. It's the same thing like uh, for me and my daughter. I like a certain type of style. I think she likes the same style and she tells me no every time. Right. So it's the same concept here where we just have to make sure as great as this picture looks, there there's pink in there. There's blue in there. There's... Right. You know, and that could be a distraction. Um, the other thing is, is that because you have wood flooring in the kitchen, that may not be preferred over tile. Correct. Um, it just all depends. And really, you need to consult with a designer or someone that you know that's kind of in the trending market and says, hey, I am nowhere anywhere near a designer. I right. would have no idea how to do this. And this is right. something that I would consult with a designer for. Well, one of the things I'd like to say before we move to our next picture is one of the ways to clean this up a little bit is mm-hmm. I think that the the ceiling has a little bit of an orange or more orange flavor to it. Right. Is that ceiling could be painted, mm-hmm. um, either the trim color or a very, very subtle color. Um, right. There are lots of solids. Um, if you look at the accent pillows in the back and on mm-hmm. the sofa, if they have a little bit of a print, a little bit of a color. Uh, and then flow, you mean traffic pattern, being able to walk right. through that you're not on top of each other. Right. The other thing that we want to be very, very careful of is the distance from the island, uh, in this case, the range to the sink. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, industry standard states, American Disabilities Act, also known as ADA, right. need 36 inches. 36 inches. Um, I am a fan of at least four feet, 48, if right. not four and a half feet. And now we don't really know what the um, the background is on this particular picture, but we want to be careful of that. And the other thing we want to be also aware of is this microwave is on the wall on the that's an exterior wall or demising wall. You have a dishwasher, you have a sink, you have a microwave, and you have double ovens. So there is a lot going mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. So planning and thinking about that uh, on the front end mm-hmm. helps tremendously. And again, not sure if our listeners or our people, guests watching, this hood looks like it comes out of the ceiling. So it's going to be more of an island hood. Right. Always not the biggest fan of that because it can block your view. Right. And it depends on the layout. Mm -hmm. The other thing, and again, we don't know the depth of this island, 
but I can't tell you how many times I've replaced uh, ranges in the island because of kids and then put them on a perimeter wall because right. they're afraid that they're going to sit on the backside Excuse uh-huh. me, and they are going to put their hands up there. So of something course. to be very, very, very. I think it, again, like it all comes down to personal preference, the needs and wants and goals of right. a client. And I do think um, creating a home that's functional and pretty at the same time is important for a lot of viewers. Um, but I would tell you this, the floor, you know, again, if you have kids, you may not want wooden flooring, correct? Um, especially depending on their age. Right. Um, if you're um, a more traditional traditional person, you may want a different type of flooring. Um, it just really depends, but it can't be as busy. Um, and then when you go to resell, the orange is going to clash or the double oven, everything on one wall is going to clash. So right. it's just got to be functional. Something to think about. For yeah, sure. for sure. Great. Let's go to our next slide. Yeah. What do you see in this very different, very clean, um, very trendy, less is more, definitely right. trendy, uh, which we have to be careful of now. I know right. that in the design industry, the furniture and the lighting industry, which is a couple of years ahead mm-hmm. of everything else, they are getting away from gray and cool. They tones. are. They are. They I don't want to say they're running, but they are whatever <laughs> one step fast. is of under running. Right. They are doing because they won't warm. Um, the, mm-hmm. the great thing is that wall paint is relatively changeable. Easy. It's not that crazy. Mm-hmm. Cabinets, countertops, a little bit of a different story. Right. That so comes at a bigger cost, to be, too. We have to be yeah. careful, and it definitely comes out of a bigger cost. The other thing that I want to mention, this is does have your cooking surface pushed up against the wall. This is a cooktop, mm-hmm. and it's actually not a range. It's not a slide in. It sits on the top. It's a little bit more mm-hmm. um, cost effective, and it works. But you're required to have an oven, which I'm assuming is probably behind us in this photograph, either a single or double oven somewhere. Mm -hmm. One's not better than the other. One has a little bit more of a meatier and a chunkier look. It also comes at a cost difference, Uh, but something to physically think about. Any other red flags that you see in here other than it's pretty, it's very model and stage. There are very few drawers in Mm -hmm. here. And right now drawers are popular. People like to pull down and then look in. But again, we don't know exactly what the price point and the cost driver was with this. It is cool looking, but something that... I think with this particular one, it's kind of interesting. So um, I think that they were limited in space. And so the cabinets are important, taking full use of storage. I think um, one of the things, especially with these type of cabinets and even the shaker style inside the cabinets can be pull out drawers. Right. So the front face can just be your traditional looking type of cabinets. Um, I have a couple of those in my house, plus the drawers. Mm-hmm. I love the drawers. Um, very versatile and functional. Um, but I do think that plays, especially when you're dealing with either a tight space or a very limited space. Um, you want to make sure you have full Storage is important, I think, in a kitchen. It's huge. Yeah. And I think when you go to resell, that's something that you need to consider. Maybe the cooktop wasn't the best because right. it takes away because you have to put the oven somewhere. somewhere you have else. to put the right. even the range top, you have to put the microwave somewhere else. And right. now, um to nowadays as far as what I'm seeing is they now have the the more compressed microwaves. So it's mm-hmm. it's actually um better Not use of, yeah, but it better is. use of space. Better use of space. Yeah. It is. So I think this is great. Um you can easily change this around if you needed to, um, to be more in line with the trend when you do go to sell. Um, but there's some key points to pay attention to, especially in price consideration. If this house is priced, you know, five hundred plus, there may be an expectation mm-hmm. of separate cooktop and oven and microwave. Or if it's below that, you can do the combo that you typically would see at your local hardware store. Right. Um, so that's a lot to consider, too. But I do like that it's actually modern and, and kind of up to clean. date. And Chris, yeah, very agree. clean. I agree. Drago, what do we have on our next one? This is my favorite one. <laughs> I, I, I like this, too. Uh, and I'm not typically a big, huge gold fan, but this is done. It's done well. Um, we have to be careful with a lot of textures and changes. For me, mm-hmm. there is the the pattern on the backsplash. There's stone on the wall to the right. There's... Um, a level pitch change. I can tell you that the ceiling looks like it is slanted, which makes it a challenge to get those pendants um, leveled at the same height. I do mm-hmm. like changing the island, you know, color or texture to something. Mm-hmm. Hardware is up to you. There looks like there's some glass shells. You have to be careful with the lighting. Uh, this does has a, does have a vegetable prep sink. This also has a cook top in it. Mm-hmm. Um, are there? And this has a fabulous refrigerator. It looks like it's a strong 42 inch. Um, that's in there or things in here that work well for you. Mm-hmm. 
So this is balanced, I think, in my opinion, as far as um, having, it, obviously this is at a higher price point. So sure. where it looks busy is appropriate. So traditionally, I think it reminds me of an Italian type of um, kitchen where you have the stone or the different pattern at the actual kitchen or the cooktop. Um, and then everything else kind of plays on each other. So a little bit of color, but not too much. Different textures, but not too much. Different, um, I guess it would be, it was very subtle colors, like very muted, where it, it plays on right. the center focus really is the cooktop and then also the island. And then the distribution of functionality makes sense as well. And I think that's important, especially if you're going to do a kitchen like this. The flow in the space, I think, mm -hmm. worked well. The mm -hmm. last question that I have is where the heck does that hood exhaust to? Because it kind of goes up and stops. Stops, so, right. So I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, well, we'll just, um, <laughs> hopefully we'll find out from someone. Our next slide or picture. Uh, this um, is a, not me or anyone that I know putting right. down flooring. I just want to bring up, and we've talked about before, mm -hmm. that there's laminate, there's PVC, there's different right. types of flooring. Right. And I, I think the big thing for this is to think about what I'm hearing from you is what material goes where, what do you put in your kitchen? Do you right. put hardwood? Do you put laminate? Do you put LVP? Do you put right. tile? Right. You really need to think about that. Well, the big thing, um, again, it depends on price consideration and where your client's needs and wants are. But what I see is uniformity is important. Huge. Um, you know, having different styles of flooring can kind of confuse the buyer mm -hmm. or it could be a huge turn off immediately. Same thing with paint colors. Right. And so, um, you know, traditionally, like you could have a tiled foyer and then walk into wood flooring around the house or um, LVP or laminate and just the mixture can confuse people and it truly can be a turn off. What we're seeing um, a lot of the times also budget constraints or budget considerations when you're doing um, floor remodels or updates um, so a lot of people will go towards the LVPs because mm -hmm. the LVPs today offer a lot. Um, they're much different than they were a few years ago. Right, and they're pretty robust for the most part. They're very robust, and they're mm -hmm. also uh, water resilient. They're not mm -hmm. waterproof. I mean, they help a little bit with right. water, uh, right. and they look spectacular right now. You right. have to chop and look for them a little bit. There's some mm -hmm. that probably aren't the greatest in the world. Right. But it is, it's not the old laminate that it was a right. few years ago. Right. It's definitely... And right. again, it works. That's in there. It's a great substitute from real hardwoods. Now, I, I would prefer real hardwoods all day long. The beauty of it right. is incredible. Right. And that's a timeless investment. Um, so my recommendation is if you can't afford the, the timeless investment, laminate is a great resource right. as well. So It is. I yeah. agree. Mm -hmm. And the LVP is luxury vinyl plank to luxury let our vinyl, listeners yeah. know. Mm -hmm. And then the different links. So our mm -hmm. next picture, which I believe is number seven, is a great room and family room. To me, there's great texture. There's consistency. The mm -hmm. floor is running all the way through. This is a natural floor. It's not uh, manufactured or a vinyl. There's a beautiful coffered ceiling. Um, they were safe with the colors. They're gray. Uh, the, the, um, the coffers actually are a little bit darker than the walls. And it's even safe. Uh, the furniture floats. I consider this out. You see the back of the sofa. Mm -hmm. What are some aspects that you like about this that work well? I think functionality and flow is important. And this is obviously a higher end home. So they have some of the, the key or unique characteristics that you would expect to see. Um, for example, you have the coffered ceilings, which are important. Um, the hardwood flooring, which is also beautiful. Uh, the kitchen into the living room and the dining room also slightly separated, but functional and open for the Same most part. Same material. Yeah. And so everything is kind of uniformed in this picture. A couple things I'd like people to take away from this and consider for your next project is the ceiling height changes over the great room or family mm -hmm. room that's coffered. Uh, you have a tray in the ceiling room with a light fixture. You also have a detail on the ceiling in the dining room and an accent wall. Right. Uh, those cost a little bit more, but the return on it is massive right. visually and decoratively out mm -hmm. there. It is absolutely stunning. Yeah, I want people to keep in mind, too, that um, the world is your oyster, and it really has to be budget considerations. It does so have to be budget. You can go right. overboard, literally, at the drop of a hat with just lighting. Um, right. So. It's one of those things where what is your goal? What are you trying to achieve? And make sure you do the research to do that and find where the balance is. Because if not, you could end up spending thousands of dollars on just the ceiling. Because as you can see on this particular picture, 
the the different uh, finishes are slight, mm-hmm. but could be expensive. Extremely. Yeah. And the one lighting the can blow your budget. <laughs> it is. One of the reasons it looks really well. Our next slide, eight or seven. Uh, th- this is showing, again, the different floor materials mm-hmm. not getting to be overly busy. Uh, think about patterns. You have a herringbone on the bottom left. You have tile. Uh, we've talked about LVP and then right. wood. I would encourage our listeners to be aware of getting overly orange and red on your right. floors. Right. Try and stay away from that, I think, is great. Do you agree on that? I do. Wonderful. Drago, our next slide. Um, this is one of our notes that we have with uh, sliding doors and windows and mm-hmm. black. What's your opinion with doing black on the inside? I don't actually, this is just Jen talking, I don't like black windows on the inside. Um, And nowadays, you can do black exterior windows with a white interior finish as well. So I think my recommendation is, if you like the black look of the windows, do the exterior, keep the inside more neutral. Playing it safe, and Mm -hmm. then I I don't disagree, and Mm -hmm. then you have to think about it its entirety. Um, I've certainly done some that have come off very, very well in the black, but you're not going to change that black. Right. Window. You're not going to do it. And I am not a fan of painting something that comes from the manufacturer a different color. Mm-hmm. You, there's consideration avoiding the warranty. And mm-hmm. I just absolutely do not encourage I know. It. There's so many colors out there nowadays, too. Right. They can do green, gray. I mean, the the color schemes are your, you know, whatever you're choosing. But have to be have to be careful with it. Because, sure. again, windows are right. something that are meant to last 15 to 20 years, if mm-hmm. not longer. And it's mm-hmm. something that willy-nilly, you don't want to change in a year or two and say, well, I'm tired of the black. I want to be able to do it. Right. So I agree. And then w- the other thing to comment on this is tons of window space, lots of right. glass that's in right. the hole is nice. So our next slide is, um, this is the white we talked about mm-hmm. uh, and the grids, whether you do grids or not, this is definitely timeless. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one thing I'd want our um, uh, listeners to take away is to try and get the trim casing color to match mm-hmm. as closely as possible to the windows as you right. can and, right. and play off of that and not right. have it completely that's off. Our number 11 slide, solar panels. And we don't want right. to dwell on this too long because no. I'm yakking and realizing we're at 30 <laughs> minutes, is they are becoming more prevalent around mm-hmm. and codes mm-hmm. are changing. I was on our neighborhood board forever, mm-hmm. and we actually had to change our policy based on what the government told us we needed to do. Right. Um, I'm probably going to offend half the listeners, I don't like the way that they look. Um, I'm not a big they're fan. They're not appealing. They're, I don't think they're appealing. There are different ones that are coming, mm-hmm. but the output is certainly positive. Um, mm-hmm. Are there pros and cons that you're seeing? Not really cons. Um, I think cons would be something that um, it would be more of the appeal. So okay. that would be the biggest con. The pros to it, obviously, is you have power most of the year, Um and it's a green effort. Mm-hmm. So you're, there's tons of tax breaks, that kind of thing. So there's benefits to it. But then at the same time, the the drawback is the lack of appeal right. um, because they just really haven't come out with anything that's very pretty or fancy. It's just that's you, it's priced. obvious right. and it's kind of like a sore thumb right. that you have on your property. One thing I'd recommend if it's something that you um, you really need solar panels is know mm-hmm. it at the very beginning, if possible, 100%. if you're building a home. So and the know architect. The codes. Um, and then know the codes, whether mm-hmm. you can or you can't do them. Right. The other thing that I would suggest is if, you, if you're if you going to do solar panels, I haven't seen solar panels that aren't predominantly dark gray or black yet. That's it. Is that, <laughs> and they'll probably will stay that way. There's a reason. It's pick shingles that are darker as well because right. they go away. Right. And this picture, although it's a beautiful tile roof, they stand out because it's black up against orange it's or clay. It's very obvious it's that you have It's extremely yeah. obvious. Now, I know yeah. that they've got to face a certain direction, mm-hmm. but if you're very, very in tune to having solar panels, mm-hmm. I would suggest considering a darker shingle that goes on your roof. I agree. Um, I agree. Sure. Yeah, One. and that will play into the design of a home, too. It will. Mm-hmm. Our next slide is, and we're going to go through two or three of these slides or okay. tubs. Um, right mm-hmm. now, I'm a bigger fan of freestanding tubs. Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone thinks that they're new and fresh and modern, and I got news for them. They've been around for hundreds of years. Right. I think they started out freestanding. Right. Um, things evolve a little bit. Uh, as far as resale value, mm-hmm. does it matter on your side that you're seeing one or the other? I know that it does on me and then what mm-hmm. we're doing and new construction and what I'm suggesting that people do. Um, it does matter. So the freestandings obviously offer more value. Right. Um, 
but it, again, it depends on the house and the and the price consideration. So if we're talking non luxury type of homes, um, the combo still works. So right. if you do it with a shower next to the actual, you know, garden tub, those still work. Right. Um, when you go into the higher end of the luxury, there's an expectation. And they don't want to see that, so they want to see the freestanding tubs. Or, like for example, the one house that we worked on where the freestanding tub was incorporated into the shower, which was really cool. Correct. Um, is there a term for that? I call it a wet room. I'm yeah. sure yeah. that someone will say that there's another word, but it's yeah. this is where the tub actually goes right. into the area that mm-hmm. the shower is, which is mm-hmm. all wet. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is, we're trying to decide whether or not that's going to be a trend or long term. Sure. I think it's beautiful and it works well. Right. There's definitely a debate whether or not you even have a tub. I think some of that falls into the size of the home. It does. If you have a home that's more than, let's call it 2,500 or 3,000 square feet, I think you need a detached tub in mm-hmm. your primary or your master bath. Right. It flows if you have well a smaller, beautiful. whether you use it or you don't use it, it doesn't matter. Right. Um, that's in there. I think you need to have it. And I'm also a fan. Keep your tubs white. Um, don't do black or Pepto-Bismol color or copper or copper, right. anything uh, that's in there. Right. Now, if you do have the extra funds, again, extra in the allowance, the porcelain white with the black mm-hmm. um, or the colored outside is nice. Mm-hmm. You do run and these are expensive. These are probably seven to ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars. You do run the risk that. 10 or 12 years down the road, mm-hmm. it's going to be, oh my gosh, I wish I didn't well, have that's black That's where you have to outside. remember that, you know, if you purchase for that home a $7,000 tub, it may be great then. The value may be there then, then but it may not right, be there right. in, you know, 5, 10, 15 years down the road. So just be cognizant of that. The biggest rule of thumb is enjoy what you have commit to that if that's what you want and understand that you may not get the full out value, but you may also get it because it might be timeless enough to where people appreciate that. It really just depends. It does. And how <laughs> important the overall word. look of the space is. Sure. Um, our next slide, I believe, is also going to show a tub. And this is um, what I call a deck tub. It physically drops mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. And this is what I'm starting to lean away from in the majority. This is not a freestanding tub. The other thing that we have to be careful of, and I, I work in different states, is what the code is. Right. Um, right now, in a lot of the areas, you're not able to step out of the tub onto a step. Um, Mm -hmm. You have to step step directly onto the main floor because they don't want you to slip and slide. You also want to be very, very aware of how you get in and out of the tub as we get older and age in place. Um, Is that important to you? And think about beautiful tub itself and nice hardware. They do have a handle Mm -hmm. on the left side uh, but this shows uh, not a freestanding tub that's actually that there's a deck around. Um, Right. And then want to encourage people to figure out again what your code is, Mm -hmm. whether or not you can or you can't have that step um, that's in there. Our next picture is, this is definitely more modern. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's freestanding tub, detached shower. This is a good balance, actually, if you're looking to do something in between, something you would traditionally see in a new construction versus um, an upper upscale or um, higher end home. So you have the freestanding, but it still kind of falls in line with the shower next mm-hmm. to it. So this one actually is a good balance. This also looks like it has some jets in it, which is nice. And you yeah. often don't have the ability to do that. Our next slide is going to be a beautiful, more modern mm-hmm. bathroom. Again, freestanding. Uh, this is a floor mount uh, faucet. And I believe off to the left, of it if we're able if they're able to see it with the picture is going to be the wet room there's a little bit of a texture mm-hmm. tile and this has a fireplace which i love uh okay. in the space if you have it great if you don't not the end of well the this world. one actually this particular fireplace um you can view it from in the bathroom or bathroom. in right and that actually was a trend in the 90s a while back yeah 80s there. or 90s and now it's coming back it so is. this is kind of neat beautiful this is certainly an upscale and nice there's mm-hmm. the glass there's the book match on the um, the marble material, I think this is beautiful all the way around. It is cool of color and grays, but could easily be you know changed if need be. Mm-hmm. But definitely a sharp look. Our slide 15 is, again, this is a, um, a, a drop-in tub. This it's is what I see mount. in most of the homes yep. in resale. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to be careful with this. Uh, one, I, I think a way to dress this up is larger format tile Mm -hmm. be cautious with your paint color it matches a little too well have a little bit of a a contrast Mm -hmm. in there a good remodel but 
you know, be aware of it. Make sure that tub is centered. This also looks like maybe like a round tub. It could be <laughs> yeah. the angle. Again, you have to be careful with the round because mm -hmm. it can get to be overly deep. Mm -hmm. And you have to be careful with the return uh, mm -hmm. that's in there. And I do love the fact that they have drawers in there. Um, our final slide is definitely modern. Right. I think it's fabulous. And what I like about it is it's very, very warm. They're introducing mm -hmm. wood. Uh, there's some black marble in there that needs to work. There's a um, a cool tub. Not sure about being able to wave at my neighbors um, through <laughs> the windows. They're and very the confident. Doors. They're very confident <laughs> people. I probably need to know them. Uh, pros and cons that you see with this. This is definitely in a certain area, more of sure. a city. It's not out right. in the country of the sticks somewhere. Right, right. This would this would play really well, maybe in a condo or an upscale apartment. Um, with limited, you know, I guess in a limited space. But we have to be very careful because black is trendy and sometimes that works and doesn't work. Correct. Um, I think everything else you can kind of update or play on. Um, and then again, the wood, that is a, that's a preference. It is Some a preference Some people for sure. do not like wood in their bathroom. Um, so it's just one of those things that works. It's beautiful. It's, it's elegant. But again, this is personal preference and this gets into – some very unique uh, characteristics that may only work for one person. Highly stylized. Yeah. Um, so yep. probably not the best idea of something that you're going right. to flip and sell. And one mm -hmm. last thing in the picture is I do see that there's a shade up top. So they do have something to lower for privacy uh, that's in there. So sure. um, if you're not as <laughs> confident as everyone else, then that is understandable. <laughs> um, let's go back to our major cheat sheet and see if there are some other factors that we mm -hmm. have left off on. Um, I uh, wanted to talk quickly about curb appeal. Curb mm -hmm. appeal is on the outside of a home. How important is that? So it depends. Um, I And I think that's the theme of our conversation, um, especially when you talk about resale. It does work. It helps. It enhances sale. Right. So if you have curb appeal, the big thing is making sure that you're just like on the inside, the outside is clean, right. free of weeds. Um, beautiful flowers. Um, when you do red, purple, orange flowers, it actually helps with a resale. Okay. Um, there's a marketing strategy to that. Um, the big thing is that it draws the attention of the actual prospective buyer um, for whatever reason. And anyone can look this up. Um, Psychology 101, there's certain colors that draw sellers, or I'm sorry, that draws buyers towards that, that purchase of the home. And um, you have to remember with curb appeal, that is the first impression of your home. Very first. And so if you want to sell your house and sell it quickly and sell it well, priced well, um, curb appeal is absolutely important. They don't sell weeds at right. Home Depot and Lowe's. They sell <laughs> plants and flowers. <laughs> right. So pull those weeds up pull or them up. spray hire them with someone. Dawn or right. do something, hire someone. Right. Very, very important. Mm -hmm. um, one last thing I do want to ask you. Uh, before we wrap is, do you have an idea that you're comfortable to tell our listeners and me, what do you see upcoming in the year? We're in 23 now. Right. Um, and also for 24. So um, 24 is kind of, uh, I'll start with 23 and then hit 24. Um, as far as the market's concerned, we still have a very robust market. Okay. Um, it's still a seller's market, but I call it um, with ease of buying. So we're not in the chaos of 20, 21, and even a portion of 22 where it was pure chaos. It was so competitive. It was hard to get into a home. Um, we're starting to see where we go back to the pre-2020, okay. um, where buyers have now a chance to kind of breathe. Right. So And they can kind of choose where they want to be. Um, the big thing is, is that we still have hot market pockets. Like, for example, the 27511 zip code is huge. And that zip code is where? Cary. Cary, North Carolina. Right. So we still have hot pockets within the triangle that will do much better than the majority, but we do and what they call, a lot of realtors will call it cooling. Right. And I think I would rather call it um, more of a eased buying experience that allows the buyers to kind of take some a minute to breathe. Um, the terms have started to be relaxed. We're not seeing those huge due diligence fees show up anymore. Um, it's kind of gotten back to a more realistic um, right. submission of offers, Thank but goodness. I do think in right, I do think in 2023 we will see the ease of buying. Um, we will have buyers take their time. We will actually have higher selections in new construction than we would in resale. Our inventory, believe it or not, is still low. Right. We just don't have the inventory. And you're talking about inventory in Central North Carolina. Correct. Okay. The inventory is still low. Um, so we have very limited as far as what I call resale homes mm -hmm. versus new construction. 
Um, so we're still going to have the necessity for the market to be and continue to be strong. Um, we have seen a slight dip as far as sales are concerned, but that's indicative of the holiday season. Right. So I think well, for, when the line was almost straight up, right. I mean, you, you can't go up forever. You can't. And so the values of the homes are still very strong. Um, the expectation of the sellers are still there, and so are the buyers. It's just now we have a little bit more time to make a decision, and that's great for buyers because before we couldn't. It was just Wham, snap. bam, thank yeah. you, ma'am. It you, is. Get it, you get what you get and hope, for you, hope and that you get it. sometimes sight unseen. Yeah. What yeah. do you think about for 24, which is a year out from where we are right now? So I see the market being stable and continuing to level out. Um, right now, we're just we're starting to see the leveling occur right. more predominantly, and I think 2024 will be more level. And what's driving this is the interest rates. The interest rates put a full stop to the chaos, um, and then – Hopefully, it will maintain the interest rates, and then we can get back to the way we were. Um, and so I don't foresee any catastrophic real estate plunge or anything like that. And then what's also driving this and the big takeaway is over the next, I would say, 2023 all the way to 2025, the economy in North Carolina is booming. We have major, major companies. Oh, my goodness. Um, we have major companies coming to town, and they're bringing not only um, – new buildings. Um, they're doing construction all over, and then it's bringing jobs. And so and that, it's all over North Carolina. It's all just over North not Carolina. the Research right. Triangle, 20-mile right. right. radius. It is anywhere from the mountains to mm -hmm. the coast. Do you mm -hmm. still see an influx of people from the north and the west, far west, moving Absolutely. to North Carolina? Absolutely. I have I literally have several clients in the pocket waiting for the right home, um, and they are from out of state, majority of them. I only have one in-state client, and all of them are just kind of, you know, are we going to, you know, we're looking for this type of house or whatever. So when that happens, obviously, we'll pull the trigger on that. But, yeah, it's kind of interesting, though. It's all out of state. So I've got California clients, Texas clients, New Jersey clients. Um, I have one Washington State client. Wow. And so we still see a lot of the West Coast. Can't get much further than that. No, no. <laughs> and I mean, hey, I am happy to um, find you a home here in North Carolina, but they're moving because of the jobs. It is. And the cost of living is much cheaper here. So. It is a little bit cheaper here or a so, lot cheaper here. And I will works. tell you, um, the other thing is, is that I will be participating in the annual economic forum, which I highly recommend people go to or at least – check it out if they do something online. What exactly is that? So every year, North Carolina Chamber of Commerce, along with a couple of other organizations, put out a forecast. Um, they kind of tell you what's happening with the, the state of North Carolina, especially in the Triangle area, who's coming, mm -hmm. um, who's, who's going, what jobs they're bringing. So it kind of gives you a pulse on what the economy is doing. And the economy is going to directly affect how the real estate market is as well. So it will give you a good pulse on what's happening and then kind of keep you in tune with expectation management of what you'll see over the next few years, which is great. So Love it. Is that information that the general public can find out Absolutely. once it happens? Mm -hmm. I think that's great. Yeah. Jenny, is there anything else that we've missed that you think is important that we no, should let I'm our just, listeners know? No, I just think the biggest thing is that when you're out in the market and you're looking to buy, build, or sell, um, make sure you do your research and then consult with a realtor, consult with a designer, consult with anyone who is in the um, industry that can help you enhance your experience. Um, but I am so grateful for being here. Happy New Year, by I the way. I love it. Happy yeah. New Year to you. Yeah. And then is there a way that our listeners and people that are watching can get up with you? Sure. They can go to my website. It's thejennygroup.com. Okay. Or they can give me a buzz, 919-208-5332. That sounds amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks. And then again, Jenny Blanton, look her up, a broker extraordinaire. Right. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming today. Yeah, thanks. Have a great day. You too. What an amazing guest. I love Jenny Blanton. She and I have been communicating for years. Tons of knowledge. Y'all be sure and check her out. That was great information. Want to talk about my terrific three before we close this podcast up. The first one, we're going to follow through what Jenny said. Expectation management. Huge. What is realistic when selling your home? What is realistic the time frame it's going to take? Also carry those exact same expectations when you're building a home or remodeling it. Make sure it's realistic and that you set it and manage it. Number two, curb appeal. 
This is what it looks like on the outside when you're getting ready to sell your home. Remember, she talked about colors, certain colors that work, flowers that work. If it's in the spring and the summertime, make sure you pull up those weeds. Think about your door handle. Think about your exterior lights. Think about your mailbox. If it's fallen over, it looks like someone's backed over it twice. You may need to replace it. You may need to paint it. Think about it. And for heaven's sakes, if you paint your mailbox, replace the numbers that's on there. Don't paint over the numbers. Make it look clean and nice. That's always a big win. And the third one, trends. Be very, very careful when you're remodeling um, or you're getting ready to, ready to sell your home to get too trendy, something that's not going to work for you. And that's going to turn potential buyers off from purchasing your home. We're going to a little bit of a different market. Kind of reflect a little bit, make things a little bit more can conservative a little bit. You can think out of the box, but don't get too wild and don't get too crazy. We also want to take this opportunity to ask for you to subscribe to this podcast, Designers Lane. This way, when you subscribe, you get or follow, you get a notification when something new um, um, pops down or gets uploaded. We also appreciate thumbs up. Hopefully thumbs up. Let us know we're doing a good job. Don't forget, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments. I'll do my best job to answer them. We want to wrap and close this up with thanking our sponsors, Jenny Blanton, who was our wonderful guest today. She's going to take care of all of your real estate needs in Central North Carolina and Dogwood and Company, building for you, whether it's luxury homes or luxury remodeling in Central North Carolina. That's right in the middle part of North Carolina. Give him a call and see if it's something he can help you out with. Thanks again, and we look forward to talking to you real soon. Have a great day.